subscribe now and press the bell icon never miss an update hello in this video we will discuss another poem from your course that's good morrow this video will give you a brief introduction to the poem line by line explanation and then we will also discuss good morrow as a metaphysical poem first of all let's have an introduction to the poem Good Morrow is a love poem written by John Donne and is considered among his early works when he was a law student. The poem was published in his 1633 collection of songs and sonnets. The poem is divided into three stanzas and each stanza consists of seven lines. The rhyme scheme of the poem is A B A B C C C. The poem is a morning love song when the poet wakes up from his sleep and bids good morning to two souls. The poem focuses on developing love between the two souls. In the first stanza, the poet mentions the time when they were after the fanciful dreams and were acting childishly. In the second stanza, the poet bids good morning to the awakened souls to enjoy the passion of love. In the third stanza, the poet and his beloved become one who can never be separated. Let us now look at the poem. I wander by my troth but thou and I did till we loved where we not we did till then but sucked on country pleasures childishly or snorted we in the seven sleepers den the word troth means pledge weaned means to stop feeding on mother's milk country pleasures means base pleasures Seven sleepers were a group of youths who hid inside a cave outside the city of Ephesus to escape one of the Roman persecutions of Christians and emerged some 300 years later. The poem begins with a series of rhetorical questions addressed to his beloved. The poet wonders what they were doing before they took the pledge of love. The poet muses if they were like the children feeding on their mother's milk. He actually doesn't believe that they were fully mature until they met each other. They were enjoying the base pleasures and their life uh, before the relationship was like those of seven sleepers who fell into a miraculous sleep for more than 300 years. It was so, but this all pleasures fancies be, if ever any beauty I did see, which I desired and got, it was but a dream of thee. fancies means imaginations the poet now answers his own questions and says whatever he experienced before the present relationship were only fancies if ever the poet had seen any beauty or desired and got it was only the reflection of his beloved and now good morrow to our waking souls which watch not one another out of fear for love all love of other sides controls and makes one little room and everywhere good morrow means good morning soul is here refer to the soul of the poet and his beloved now the second stanza changes from physical love to spiritual love the poet now says good morning to the souls which have woken up from a long sleep the souls are looking at each other not because of the fear of losing one another but they like to look at each other It is love that prevents them from running after other sites of pleasure. Love makes their small room as wide as the world. Let sea discoverers to new worlds have gone. Let maps to other worlds on worlds have shown. Let us possess one world, each hath one and is one. Here the word possess means to have or own something. Hath means has. The poet says that sea explorers can discover new worlds and cartographers can chart many new lands on maps. But each lover owns a world which merges into one and both can explore the world of love together. My face in thine eyes, thine in mine appears. A true plain hearts do in the faces rest. Where can we find two better hemispheres without sharp north, without declining west? Hemispheres or the two parts of the globe sharp north means coldness of north declining west means darkness of west when sun sets 
The poet then again directly addresses to his beloved and says that their faces appear in each other's eyes and the purity of their hearts is visible on their faces. They cannot find two better hemispheres without the coldness of north and without the darkness of west. The two hemispheres refer to the two bodies of lovers which together form their own world. Whatever dies was not mixed equally. If our two loves be one, or thou and I love so alike, that none do slacken, none can die. Slacken means slower, weaker, or less active. The poet then says, if something dies, it dies because its parts were not appropriately mixed. If their two souls are matched perfectly, or if they loved so each other, neither they can lose their power nor can die. If their love is equal, it is eternal. Let us now understand how Good Morrow is a metaphysical poem. Love is a predominant theme of the poem which makes it a metaphysical poem. Another characteristic of metaphysical poetry is the use of conceit. In Good Morrow, unaware and unconscious lovers have been compared with the breastfed babies and with the seven sleepers. The other conceits used in the poem are the seven sleepers gen. Sea Discoverers, Sharp North, Declining West, and Hemispheres. Augment is a basic ingredient in the structure of a metaphysical poem. The first line articulates a question which is carried forward up to the fourth. In the poem, Dunn has argued how love becomes immortal. The poem is intellectual rather than emotional which makes it a metaphysical poem. Another feature of metaphysical poetry is that it begins abruptly. Good morrow is also earnest and abrupt which catches our attention.